Hi everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at Fog of Love. This game, as it says on the cover, is a romantic comedy as a board game, and the game certainly is very different from most games I've ever played. It's more of a role-playing exercise than a proper board game. It's sort of a, a storytelling, story-building game in which you are going to make up two characters and then follow their story through a relationship. So, I'm going to show you how the game works. We'll come on back after that and we'll see what I think of this one. The first thing you'll do in the game, after picking which story you are playing, in this case we are playing Sunday Morning Date, the introductory story, but there are three more in the, in the box. So the first thing you'll do after you pick that story is create your characters, just as you would in a, in a role-playing campaign. And you'll find this game is very much like a role-playing campaign. So, to uh, do that, to create your character, the first thing you'll do is you'll pick your gender. You are going to then draw five of these trait cards, and you'll keep three. And these are basically goals for your character uh, that you are trying to achieve throughout the game. So you'll keep three of those. Then you are going to draw three profession cards and keep one, play that on yourself. So we have over here, this character is an athlete, and this character over here is an insurance agent. And then lastly, you'll draw feature cards, and you are going to draw five of those, and taking turns back and forth, you'll play them on the other player and talk about how you noticed that thing when you met that person. And right there, the role playing is going to start. The game encourages you to create a name for your character. And it even mentions several times throughout the rule book that you are indeed playing characters. You are not playing yourselves. And it encourages that role playing aspect. So once you've done that, so this character, for example, who is our athlete here, is eloquent, she is tattooed, and she is lean, those things are right away going to start affecting these personality dimensions that you can see here in the center of the board. You'll be tracking those with your tokens. So for example, discipline here, curiosity, extroversion, sensitivity, gentleness, and sincerity. And you'll be either on the, you know, this side of the scale or the other side. So for example, sensitivity here at the top, we have being sensitive, anxious, or sentimental on the bottom. We have thick skinned and so on. All right. So once that's all done, then you are ready to begin and you are going to follow the synopsis here for the setup. You are going to then flip this to the other side. It'll tell you the opening of your story. So in this case, again, Sunday morning date. It says, uh, you meet at a friend's party and fall in love instantly. One of you leaves early, but before you split, you agree to meet the next day, uh, uh, the day after on a Sunday morning date, the title of this story. And then it says what the challenge is. So Sunday morning date is a short and sweet story that is unlikely to include sustained drama because it is so short, it will be difficult for the characters to fulfill all of their trait goals. Keep this in mind while you are playing. And then below that it tells you the length of the game. The game is going to be played over three chapters. So we have chapters one, two, and three, and this finale here, at least again for this story. And each one is going to be made up of a length, a number of cards that will be played here in the play area. And so right away, we are going to start with chapter one, all right? Also, by the way, the players drew some cards into their hands from the sweet, serious, and drama scene decks here, uh, mostly sweet for the Sunday morning date. And so the very first choice is here on the back of chapter one, and this is gonna pretty much explain how most of the game is going to go, mechanically, the things you do in the game. So, here we go. So where do, should we go is the story. You met through a friend yesterday, today you're going on your first date. How do you suggest starting the day? And then it says both players have to choose A, 
B or C. So A is the classic restaurant date, get a fabulous lunch and lots of sit down time to really talk and get to know each other. B, sing karaoke, do a lot of silly serenades and electrify the room with your favorite song. It's a great way to avoid awkward silences. And C, pretend to be a tourist, go sightseeing and share your impressions as you enjoy the attractions and each other's company. So each player is going to pick up their tokens here and select which of those options they like better. And you'll put that token there with the choice face down. Once both players have picked, then you will reveal those choices. Hey, it's a match. Who would have guessed? And in this case, it'll tell you right here what happens if you match or if you don't match. If you do match, it says you are fully in sync about what to do, and you get plus 14 of these heart tokens you're tracking on your character. It's basically fulfillment and happiness. So 14 means we're gonna go around 10, then another four, and you put one of these tokens in the center to denote a plus 10, all right? So both players have done that, and then you start the story proper in which uh, going back and forth, the players are going to play cards from their hands in order to pose uh, storytelling choices, moments that happened, all right? So we're gonna start over here with this character, our athlete, and they are going to pick a, uh, a card here. So um, uh, let's go with this one, a new look. It says, since you got that hair cord, uh, hair, haircut, I'm sorry, I think more people are flirting with you. How does the partner react and how does the player hope they react? So you're posing this, it says both players choose, and here are your, chop, uh, your options, A, B, and C, and each one tells you something that uh, that choice entails. So A is, yeah, it's, it's a bit overwhelming to finally be noticed. B is, nah, I don't really think so. And C is, yeah, it's fun to see how those uh, that are flirting with you come across now, okay? So that's basically that. And then each player, again, would take these back and they would choose a thing. And below it tells you the effects, all right? But besides that, you have some effects here on the side. So if this player picks B, nah, I don't think so then they are also changing their personality dimensions by putting one of these tokens here. In that case, that's what happens, all right? And once that's over, this player is going to draw a new card. It tells you right here on the synopsis what deck it comes from, in this case, Sweet. And then the other player is going to play a card, and this continues back and forth until the scene is fulfilled, equal to however many cards it tells you it is. In this case, chapter one, six cards in total, all right? And then you move on to chapter two. Besides this kind of card, in which you pose some options and both players choose, you are going to have a couple of different kinds of cards. Some simply do something. For example, you might have some that change your uh, your features. You can get rid of a feature and get a new one. You might change your career. Uh, you might change one of the traits you are going for. Things like that, all right? You also have some that are secrets, and you're going to tuck those secrets right here under the board. They'll be revealed at the end of the game and affect the game in some way. And then some just say your partner chooses, okay? And you simply see what they go for and how that affects you. But ultimately, the overall story here and the overall arch is that you are trying to affect these values here and these values in order to fulfill your traits and finally fulfill your destiny. You're going to start with some of these destiny cards as indicated again on the synopsis card and throughout the game you'll be forced to shed some of these. So you might say, okay, this destiny I'm not really going for that. So I'm picking these three here, and then later on you might have to get rid of another one, and so on, until you finally come to the finale, which is going to tell you, okay, now you are both going to reveal your destinies, see you fulfill that destiny, and what happens, right? Uh, you are possibly going to stay together, uh, split up, be happy, stay together but be unhappy, and so on. So that's what you're doing. Again, mechanically, the game is ultimately very simple. As you can see, you are affecting these stats with your choices in the game, but 
it very much encourages a storytelling aspect. This does feel like a role-playing game in a romantic comedy setting, right? Or maybe even not a comedy, maybe just a romantic setting. And so that's what you are doing in the game. I'm definitely glossing over a few things here, but the general idea is that you are building a character each, you are then going on a story, in this case, Sunday morning date, but as I said, there are three more, and then posing moments of conflict or romance, perhaps, and making choices on those moments, manipulating your stats here and here, and seeing if you can fulfill that destiny and what happens at the end to these two characters. So, that should give you an idea of how the whole thing works. You're not really going to get a feeling of how the game plays from this overview, but uh, it's, it's something to get started, right? And uh, that's basically it. Let's go back up top and let me tell you if I think the game is successful at involving you in that story it is attempting to tell. So let's talk about the game a little bit using my target audience system. We're going to start off with thematic ties. This game has an extremely rich theme. I mean, clearly the focus here to tell a, a game from with, with this theme and from this point of view was paramount to the designer, right? It is a singular vision and everything in the game works towards telling that story. So if there's one thing that cannot be ignored in this package, it is the theme. And I rarely find myself saying that when it comes to board games, right? Yes, there are many board games that have such a rich and, and clearly focused theme that you cannot envision that game without it. This is not that case. This game is all about that theme and it's well implemented. The aesthetics, which also includes the quality of the components, is superb. The artwork in the game is very well done. Iconography is excellent. The quality of everything. I mean, uh, we're talking here the box. The insert in the game is spectacular. The tokens, the nice poker chips with the letters for your choices. Everything just looks fantastic together and comes together really well. So aesthetics here are just off the charts amazing. The replayability and scalability. Obviously the scalability here doesn't make any sense. It's just for two people, okay? The replayability is, I would say, quite high. Not only do you have a ton of cards for your uh, characters to basically, you know, stumble their way through, but character creation could be incredibly different, right? You have multiple stories right in the box that you can play if you want to mix it up. And so the the branching storylines, the, the branching, uh, you know, uh, storytelling in the game is going to be, I mean, really, if you enjoy the game, could be infinitely replayable. There's that much content in there. And uh, even if you start seeing the same things, uh, the same cards, you know, the same scenes, the characters should be different, enough to inform one choice over another, you know? The game length uh, is something that I have a minor problem with. I do find the game to be a little on the long side. Not the introductory scenario, that one's certainly short enough. Uh, Sunday morning uh, um, date, I forget what they call it, Sunday morning. That one's very quick and short, and, and so it works quite well and it does not outstay its welcome at all. Some of the other scenarios are a little long. The box does say one to two hours, and I'm not sure I want to uh, engage in this role-playing scenario for a full two hours, you know? I enjoyed doing it, and I think it's clever, it's interesting, and it's, it's uh, outside the box, certainly, but it's perhaps a little long. Maybe that's just me. Uh, that's a little bit how I feel, you know? Uh, the ease of play, which involves fiddliness, uh, the age appropriateness, if there's any weird design choices, things like that. Obviously, I'll start with the age appropriateness. This is the game for adults. It's going to have uh, adult content in it. It's not lewd or anything like that, but it is tackling a subject that is inherently for grown-ups. So be aware of that. As far as fiddliness or anything like that, I thought the designer took great care with uh, iconography and sort of the, the flow chart of the game to make it very simple to play and teach. It's not a game that is ultimately that simple. What you're doing in it is pretty simple. All the things you are tracking 
could be mishandled by someone who had taken less time and care to to concoct this uh, this game, you know. Uh, and then if there's any weird design choices or anything like that, I don't think so. It, it feels uh, well put together. It feels solid, you know. It's a game that is it's easy to play, and it comes with. Uh, one of the most uh, intricate and really fantastic uh, learn to play systems built into the game. When you first play this game, if you want to, the game's not that difficult to learn to play, but if you want to, you can take the deck out of the box and go through it and, and it will explain how to play the game while you are playing the game, that first one, right? Because the, you know, you'll come up to cards that say, okay, stop, read this, it introduces a new rule, it tells you, okay, deal this many cards to each player, keep going until you hit this other card, okay, here's something new, learn that, and it does that interestingly. It's it's a little lengthy, they, they take it their time teaching you everything, but it's there, and you could learn it very easily from that system, you know. And then uh, lastly, I'm gonna talk about tactics and strategy and luck. Which feels a little strange, honestly, because this game is so different from most things out there that even the concept of tactics, of playing strategically, are almost alien to the concept, you know? It's, it's a... this is a role-playing game. Make no mistake about that. Mechanically, this game's pretty simple, you know? There are... the, the choices here are not driven uh, or maybe maybe they are for some people, but I, I don't think they are. They're not driven from a point of view of winning or losing, right? They are driven from the 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 wanting, the need to tell a story, to to inhabit this character you've created, you know, and take them through not a dungeon fight, not a, a, an escape from a a place that is attempting to you know to attack you, whatever. It's driven from a a relationship with someone else and that's different you know i haven't I, I there might be some but i haven't seen anything quite like this before so overall i think this game is certainly a success i think it's going to be perhaps a divisive game perhaps it has a small audience i couldn't tell you that you know uh but i definitely consider it to be something new it's it's different what it does it it embraced you know and ran with it and for that, I have to commend it. It's really a, a beautiful piece of work. Everything in the box is well thought out. It's well written. It's handled with care. And, and a lot of attention and love clearly went into this package, you know. It's nice to see something different out there. And I think this is uh, going to get high marks for me, even if I did not enjoy the game, just for that. But I do enjoy the game. Yes, it can outstay its welcome sometimes, and I certainly can play it with everyone, right? It's going to have a very specific uh, audience, you know? But for that moment, for that audience, it is an engaging uh, adventure almost, you know? So I like it. This one is going to get a seal of excellence from me. What a unique and refreshing idea this game is. Hopefully, people do more experimental things that are handled with this much care. And I'd love to see some more of that. So that's going to be it for me. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.